Here we have a used 2015 Toyota Highlander. This one comes in the XLE trim level with all wheel drive. This color is pre dawn gray mica. And then we have black leather interior. And the powertrain consists of a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, made it to a six speed automatic transmission. And then this one has a little over 176,000 miles. But as we get around to the front end here, halogen headlamps, halogen fog lights, just a little bit of yellowing on the headlamps, quite a bit of road rash on the front, nothing that sticks out necessarily. And then we have just a little bit of fading on that front bumper there. But while I'm up here, I had to move because people were going around with leaf blowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop the hood. Pretty heavy, but there's that 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. It's quite dirty in there, but this has seen some things that have that kind of mileage in eight years. But coming around to the wheels, we do get 18 inch aluminum wheels. And the finish on those seem to still be in pretty good shape. And then we do get passive keyless entry on the front doors. And a huge shout out to Chevrolet Buick GMC of Murfreesboro for allowing me to review this. I'll leave a link below in the description. But we do get one touch automatic up and down windows in the front and then just regular power windows for the back, power door lock controls, rear window lock, and then power mirror controls. You can pick a side and then adjust using that knob. Bottle holder there, additional storage. And then here's the button for the power lift gate. And then we do have the windshield wiper de-icer and we can turn that on and off there. And then I already popped the hood, but there's the hood release and there's a gas cap release. Storage there, foot pedal, parking brake. And we do have a manual tilt telescope steering wheel. And here is our power driver seat with two-way power lumbar support. And then we also have power thigh support here you can use that and the seats actually held up pretty nicely in my opinion not seeing any crazy cracks or tears in the leather but I have that seat up front adjusted for someone of my size being 6'3 with longer legs let's go ahead and check out that leg room but first love having the rear window blinds huge huge plus for me whenever I'm looking at a vehicle like this that I might have my kids in and then we can fold the seat to get to that third row by hitting that number one and then you can do it from the back here well, let's go ahead and get in here so great space back here i can fit my feet underneath the seat my knees are nowhere near the back of the seat several inches of headroom and a lot of that has to do with how the sunroof keeps the roof low there then towards the back you get that room back so very impressed how they did that but seat back pockets both sides AC controls are here, fan speed off, and then we can adjust fan direction here. Turn that auto mode on, and you can get that going too, and then you can adjust your temperature there. And down below here, we have a little space, and we can hook up a two-prong, or actually, you might be able to hit a, a smaller three-prong household plug in there for 120 volt. And then we do have the cup holders here in the middle seat. To the third row that's your room back there mostly for the kids but what's great about this is it does give you access to have up to eight passengers with this setup and then you can probably hang two plastic hangers several metal hangers on that hook there and then if you ever need to activate your child lock just push that back and forth Now for the fuel cap, there that is there. And as we come around to the back end here, I like the look, just a, something happened here. I don't know if something was backed into or something was, something hit this or what, but just have a little bit of wear and tear on the back end here. Now I hit this button here you can pop this back glass to get to that cargo space or hit the button underneath and utilize that power lift gate. So to the back here, we can fold these seats flat. 
just by pulling up there. And that's the difference between the third row being up and the third row being down. And of course, an ambulance or fire truck, whatever it is, is coming through here. But storage underneath here, and then your jack and all that's there. And then underneath the vehicle, that's where your spare tire is. And there's your exhaust. My gosh, that's loud. And if you ever need to get your seat to fold flat, you just pull up here and then pull here. And as you can see, that's the difference between having that third row down and the third row up. I just knocked myself out. Man, that hurt. And then we do have a manual front passenger seat. But seat bottom controls there, seat back control here. Love this, and this has kind of been a feature in many of the Highlanders over the years. This is very usable, very smart. So you can put your phones here, change, whatever, and you have all that storage. And then you have a lockable glove compartment here. Owner's manuals are still in this one, and we do have a window sticker. So you can pause anywhere you need to if you want to take a closer look at all the standard features you get here. And it's crazy this stickered under $40,000 for all that you get here. And honestly, especially interior wise, I feel like this has held up very well for 2015 with 176,000 miles on it. Well, let's hop in the driver's seat. So leather wrapped steering wheel, a few nicks, a little fading, but for the most part, it's held up pretty nicely. Now to the radio, we do have navigation here and the SD card is right there and that's what runs the nav. So you just go in there or you can go through the app section and do that. And then it's pretty easy to just type in your destination or you can find previous destination points of interest, things of that nature. And then you even have presets, which I think is fantastic. So if you have a home, work, and let's say your mom's house, your wife's work, whatever it is, you can save up to five presets there, which is kind of something I'm not used to seeing on a navigation system in general. And then for audio, we do get Bluetooth along with AM, FM, and then we have XM as well. And then we also have that aux input too. Now hit this app section, you can go through your phone and to connect that, I showed you earlier how that was. You can go through the actual Bluetooth setting and Bluetooth audio, or you can just hit that phone indicator and then you can add it and delete pretty easily too. So you can just search for the Bluetooth on your device and pull it up that way. And then you have access to XM traffic. And you can use that when you have that subscription. And then your settings are in here. So go to general, you can change your language, units of measurements, units of measurement, excuse me. And then a few other things as well. And the CD drives here, play, eject, volumes here. And you can click that, turn the audio off, turn that down, tune knob here. Backup cameras there. And then you do have dual zone automatic climate controls down here. So you can set that auto mode on and then turn that off by adjusting the fan speed. And then you can adjust your passenger side there and then sync and unsync pretty easily. AC toggle to show you where that is there. And then fan speed again, fan direction here, rear temperature can be adjusted, and then you can turn the rear system off. And then you have your rear defroster side mirrors, heat those there, hazards there. And then down here we have our DAC controls, so downhill acceleration controls there, 
center differential lock there, and then snow mode, you can toggle that, traction control. And for the shifter, just pull down, reverse neutral drive, and you can come over here and manually shift there. And then heated steering, or heated seats, excuse me, are right here, so you can set those for the left and right side. And center console cubby space is there. And then you have a 12 volt down beneath. You have a tray that you can slide back and forth as well or completely remove if you want to. And then up here, sunglasses holder, rear visor, sunroof controls, garage door transmitter. And we can tilt or one touch slide this roof back and forth. So it does go all the way back love that the view of the back seat from up here and then if our clock is right here we can adjust that using these buttons here hours minutes but to the steering wheel blinkers are behind here low beams corners auto daytime running lights off and then we have our fog light toggle here and we can turn the high beams on there turn them off and then flash there and then our windshield wiper controls that's one time and this is off, intermittent low, high. And then we can adjust our intermittent wiper speed here. And then we have our rear wiper here. So off, intermittent on, pull back for that rear wiper fluid and then push up for the front wiper fluid. And then volume controls here. We can go through our track list, radio station presets here. We can go through our sources here and then we can hold it to mute. Voice recognition button here, Bluetooth buttons here. And then we can use all of this to go through the gauge cluster that digital part in the middle and you can adjust your units language and all that here as well so a quick look at all of that there and then your sub menu is pretty self-explanatory and i like how it's set up and then for the cruise turn it on and off here set and then cancel by pulling up here and we can toggle our odometer either show us the trips or that and then we can just hit this and we just tap this to adjust the instrument panel brightness there and there's our push button start finally here's the key fob and i did forget to mention i didn't see it back there 12 volt and then that usb a and aux put it right in there but next, let's go ahead and take this 2015 Highlander out on the road for a quick test drive. So starting the test drive here in the Highlander XLE, definitely love the V6 in terms of the power you get. Just, and with the all wheel drive, especially having that linear power curve, you're not getting a lot of pull because you have more of a, an even power distribution there, but just good acceleration overall. And I will say just off the bat, I'm hearing a, a weird kind of low end rumble, but other than that, it's driving pretty well. So let's give it throttle here. And again, a very, very strong powertrain. Of course, you can manually shift if you want to. And the shifts are pretty responsive. But like here at a cruise, I like that it's basically pulling the vehicle to be more efficient as opposed to pushing it from the, the rear wheels. And you really just have that for slippery situations that are coming from a stop. That's where the all wheel drive really shines. But ride quality is pretty solid. Just a tad bit of sway here. I shouldn't say sway, but I'm just feeling the wind a little bit. But the wind noise itself is pretty, pretty subdued. It's definitely there, but it's it's minimized to quite an extent. And then the 
the tires aren't overly noisy either. But just drives like I would expect a Highlander to drive. Just very normal, very simple. So we're gonna take it out of the sport mode here. Put it back in just a normal drive mode. The vehicle's driving. Or I should say the transmission is pulling automatically now. So I don't know. I'm going to say it's an exhaust leak that I'm hearing. But just a... You know, it's a solid vehicle. It, it has a history of that, especially with the six-speed automatic and the naturally aspirated V6. Now, the newer ones have that turbocharged four-cylinder, so we'll see how those hold up. A lot of people are disappointed that the V6 option is gone. Basically, the naturally aspirated options are being minimized quite a bit by Toyota. I mean, all manufacturers, but especially Toyota. We're used to having the naturally aspirated V6 the naturally aspirated four cylinders, the hybrid powertrains, and then just the, the V8s that we get in the Sequoias and Tundras that are known to last so many miles. But going away from that, and I feel like this is pretty, obviously, like I said, I, I hear that sound that's not supposed to be there, but just for a 177,000 mile Toyota, this is why people love these vehicles because there's nothing going on here. Everything's just normal, driving normally. Everything's still working. Doesn't need a transmission at this mileage. You're not having to look at replacing engine parts and all of that. It's just a simple, easy to maintain vehicle, especially if you maintain it correctly. But a good family hauler, especially if let's say you have five or six kids it's nice to be able to put them in the back. Now you're gonna be limited on trunk space with that third row up, but other than that, a good hauler to take everybody to the movies, to the mall, or whatever, as long as you don't have too many strollers. And that's the only downside, but if you need all that extra space, go ahead and get a Sequoia, a Tahoe, an Expedition, something like that. But again, especially for the fuel economy and what you get here, I think it's a pretty good package, especially used. I'll try to make sure I leave the price that Chevrolet of Murfreesboro has it at now, just in case you're interested in purchasing because it's probably one of the cheaper ones as it's one of the higher mileage ones. But again, that's usually not that bad if you get a lot of miles in a short period of time because hopefully that meant it was a lot of highway miles. But this will bring me to the end of my review of this 2015 Toyota Highlander XLE with the V6.